Okay, so today's lesson is going to be on is sex marriage. Okay, we're going to start with Exodus 22 and verse 1. Exodus chapter 22 and verse 1. If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. So this is giving you this this part right here. We're going down. It's kind of telling you if you steal something. So you're going to see the context. So we're going to get down to giving you more understanding. But we're getting the context that it's giving you our laws when it comes to stealing something that don't belong to you and different things like that. Go ahead. Verse two. If a thief be found breaking up and be smitten that he die, there shall no blood be shed for him. If the sun be risen upon him, there shall be blood shed for him, for he should make full restitution. If he have nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. If the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, whether it be ox or ass or sheep, he shall restore double. If a man shall cause a field or vineyard to be eaten and shall put his, in his beast and shall feed in another man's field of the best of his own field and of the best of his own vineyard, shall he make restitution. If fire break out and catch in thorns, so that the stacks of corn or the standing corn or the field be consumed therewith, he that kindleth the fire shall surely make restitution. If a man shall del deliver unto his neighbor money or stuff to keep, and it be stolen out of the man's house, if the thief be found, let him pay double. Okay, so you're seeing that we have protocol in Israel. Like, for example, you let somebody borrow your car, somebody borrow your car, and they wreck your car. You know, brothers be like, hey, don't you have insurance? Man, I'll let you borrow my car. My insurance, maybe I only have liability insurance. And I and, and so I got to buy a new car. Oh, man, I ain't got no money, man. I don't, I, that's the way we are now. We, What's your favorite word? Exactly. But the right thing to do is to restore back to them another car. But we like, I, I ain't got, I'm not spending my money on another car. I'm gonna just, he just, we just won't be friends no more. We'll give up our friendship than to give up money. That's not the way Israelites are. We have we, we stand above, above board. We have character. Go ahead. Verse eight. If the thief be not found, then the master of the house shall be brought unto the judges to see whether he had put his hand unto his neighbor's goods. For all manner of trespass, whether it be for ox, for ass, for sheep, for raiment, or for any manner of lost thing, which another challengeth to be his, the cause of both parties shall come before the judges. And whom the judges shall condemn, he shall pay double unto his neighbor. If a man deliver unto his neighbor an ass, or an ox, or a sheep, or any beast to keep, and it die, or be hurt, or driven away, no man seeing it, then shall an oath of the Lord be between them both, that he hath not placed his hand unto his neighbor's goods, and the owner of it shall accept thereof, and he shall not make it good. Okay, it said his neighbor's goods. So remember that, his neighbor's goods. You can't bother some your neighbor you can't take your neighbor's goods where are we at to so 12 okay go ahead and if it be stolen from him he shall make restitution unto the owner thereof if it be torn in pieces then let him bring it for witness and he shall not make good that which was torn and if a man borrow aught of his neighbor and it be hurt or die the owner thereof being not with it he shall surely make it good right he shall make it good if you borrow a car you do something and, and you destroy it. It's no, I, well, I'm sorry, brother. That's, that's it. You got to make restitution for when you, when you hurt your brother. And that's a hurt if he had a car and let you borrow it and you, and you, uh, wreck his car. That's a hurt to him. You got to make restitution. Ain't no, I, uh, if you, you know, you let me borrow it. That's what we are. Well, you let me borrow it. I, I mean, I ain't make you. We'll come up with some excuse to not pay. Go ahead. Verse 15. But if the owner thereof be with it, he shall not make it good. If it be an hired thing, it came from his hire. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, and he lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. Okay, if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. Meaning that if you lay with a woman, Israelite woman, then you are supposed to make her your wife. She's not your wife yet. You're supposed to make her your wife. You're endowed to make, you ought to make her your wife. Okay, continue. Verse 17. If her father utterly refused to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. If the father, uh, why? Because the daughter belongs to the father. 
the reason that it's going through this is telling you if you steal something, you stole some, you use somebody else's property. That woman, that daughter, that virgin, or whoever belongs to her husband, to her father. You can't just sleep with her and say, oh, she's my wife. That's like you coming to someone's house, staying in it one night and say, oh, this is my house now. Because I stayed in it. Just because you had sex with her does not make her your wife. That belongs to her, her father. You just borrow, you just use something without his permission. That's why above is going through the laws of taking a neighbor's whatever. You just took your neighbor's daughter without her, without his permission. And you owe him. Now you got the, and if he utterly refuses, well, how can he refuse if he's always, if he's already his wife? Remember, if you sleep together, you're, that's your wife. How can he refuse if you're already his wife? Because she's not your wife. Y'all are not, y'all, she was not promised to you. She didn't, you weren't engaged. She's not your, she belongs to someone else. Her father, he got to give her to you. You got to pay him restitution for taking something that didn't belong to you. She's not automatically your wife because you decide to sleep with her. But to your question, if the father is not alive, you still have to make a covenant with her. Now, if you make a covenant with her, hey, we're um, I'm marrying you. We're married. Then, yes. But it's not automatic based off of sex. Some people believe just because you have sex with her and they go around fooling women into that. You, my wife, and you, my wife, and you might just because they had sex with them. That's what some men do. I'm not talking about they made a covenant with them. Hey, we're, you know, I'm engaged to you. We're married or whatever. We're engaged or we, we espouse to each other or, or we are uh, married to each other now under God. That's different because you now made a verbal uh oath you got a covenant because you spoke it and you got to bring to pass what you spoke you can't just say i'm married to you and then you just let her go because you got you you know you ain't got paperwork on it that's why the scriptures say you got to have paperwork also see these men they go married they quote unquote marry hey we uh i think we had that situation happen at, at the past at the um tabernacles. tabernacles with a girl uh 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 Met this guy, this Israelite guy. They, they, I guess they slept together, and she said, "Ah, oh, this is my my Lord." And da 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 da. My wife saw her inside of the uh, bathroom crying and stuff. She was like, she told my wife, "Yeah, I, I barely know him, but he said I'm married to him and everything." And so, you know, I'm really a Christian. And 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 she was crying because they were fighting and stuff like that. And because she's young, she don't know better. He is, she's not even the Israelite. She's very she. He, he kind of forced her into it because he slept with her. That was one incident. Then had another instance where where someone reached out to my wife on Facebook. She she was dealing with a guy. They never slept together. She was like she was trying to get advice on what she's supposed to do because she watched a video of ours. And she was like, well, they got into an argument. She told him to put her hand, his hand on her thigh, his thigh, her thigh, and he put his hand on his thigh, and they made a covenant that they were married or espoused or whatever, and then they got in an argument, and he, he, he now he ghosts her every time she calls, he, she won't speak, and she upset, like, we're supposed to be married, or what, 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 whatever. Y'all marry these, y'all deal with these dumb men, and y'all silly women deal with these young, these men that fool you all into thinking you're married just because you had sex with them, Okay? They are supposed to make you your, their wife. You're not their wife yet. Until you all make a covenant with each other. Once you make a covenant, that's, that's different. Okay, let's go to Deuteronomy 22 and 13. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 13. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her and give occasions of speech against her, and bring up an evil name upon her, and say, I took this woman, and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hated her. Hold up. So this, this is a situation where this man gave his daughter to that to another man to marry and now this man who she married he's married to because he don't like her no more is saying she's not a virgin so he can get out of it 
The purpose of the tokens of virginity is to prove that she was a virgin. That that man can't come later and say she's not a virgin and, and divorce her or get rid of her because she was not a virgin. It has nothing to do with consummating the marriage is for this purpose. It's not for once we have sex, we're married. It's to for virgins. I know now we don't know a lot of the women slept with 100 guys. And so they don't follow the law. And the men don't. So when they read this, they don't understand that the purpose of, 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 of sex and contemplating the marriage was for that tokens of virginity. And that's what it's going to explain here. When if they do have a father, you should be asked the father. It doesn't matter whether she you don't know how many men she's been with or whatever is going on. But you still should ask the father, can I marry? You know, is OK if I marry your daughter? Because he's going to give her away at the wedding. Right. But most times we just go and deal with her and then we just don't worry about the father. And she tell the father, hey, we get married. I'm married. He asked me to marry him, stuff like that. But that's not the proper way. It's a lot more respectful for a man, uh, somebody come to marry your daughter to come to the door and you meet him and everything. And then you talk to him and say, hey, I, he say, I want to, you know, I'd like to marry your daughter. You've gotten to know him or you know him, you know his family. And then you're like, yeah, I, I give you my blessing. And then he asks her to marry and you already gave it, but for a lot of, you know, I don't even know the guy. You're talking about marrying him, you don't even know the guy. You're going to bring him over so I can meet him? You see what I'm saying? Because she just go out. That's why your daughter's supposed to be in your house, and you're not supposed to be letting your daughter go out there and be with all these guys. You're supposed to protect your daughter. But uh, go ahead. Where we're going? Verse 17. And lo, he hath given a, oh, no, 18, excuse me. And the elders of the city shall take the man and chastise him. And they shall immerse him in a hundred shekels of silver and give him give them unto the father of the damsel, because he hath brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife. and He may not put her away all his days. Right, because they gave the tokens of virginity, showed the blood stain on the on the thing. And now he got to be chastised and he can't give her up the rest of his life. See, That's the way it was supposed to be. Not know. Oh, I'm tired of uh, I do whatever I want to do. Uh, did we read 17? I, I can't think we said Yeah, go read 17. Go back. All right, excuse me. <clears throat> Verse 17. And lo, he hath given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity, and they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. Right, so he gave speech saying that she's not a maid, meaning she's not a virgin. So he went and got the cloth, spread it in front of the elders to prove that she was a virgin. So it's, when they go and have, consummate the marriage, it wasn't for, hey, we're not married until we have sex. What I'm what I'm connected to is those that believe sex itself is marriage, not the ones who believe that making a covenant, have, you know, is marriage. But those that believe sex itself, if you have sex with a person. You're now my wife. I go sex with someone else. You're now my wife. I'm telling you, no, that's not the way it works. OK, go ahead. And the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him, and they shall immerse him in an hundred shekels of silver, and give them unto the father of the damsel, because he hath brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife, and he may not put her away all his days. But if this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die, because she hath wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. So shalt thou put evil away from among you. Right. So when you're in your father's house, you can't be messing around uh, with men in your father's house. That's a serious offense. I know now people do what they want to do. Their daughters, a lot of men, a lot of families let their daughters. They'll let men, guys sleep over with their daughter in the house. All kind of mess and folly. That's the way a lot now. Things have changed. Go ahead. 23. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, then ye shall bring them both out the gate of that city, and ye shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, because she cried not, being in the city, and the man, because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife, so shalt thou put away evil from among you. Right. You see his neighbor's wife, like we spoke about earlier, taking something that don't belong to you. 
And this is talking about a, a, a betrothed, meaning they're not married. It's not like it was before or like we think it is. And now, oh, I'm engaged. Oh, we broke the engagement off. Once you're engaged, it's done. You're married. That's why the two of them can, are killed because you're already married. That's that oath. OK, you can't go back on an oath. We do it now. We get engaged to five different women. And keep none of our word. That's not the way it's supposed to be. That's why it's important that you, the women, find a good Israelite man and don't be dealing with all these other jokers out here from the street. Go ahead. It's 25. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. So if the man sleep, rape her pretty much, then only the man die. She didn't, she couldn't help. Go ahead. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. Right. Same thing as you rising up against your neighbor and killing your neighbor. Go ahead. For if he found her in the field, and the betrothed damsel cried, and there was none to save her. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold unto her, and lie with her, and they be found, then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be, on his, and she shall be his wife, because he hath humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. Right. And a man shall take, shall not take his father's wife, nor discover what above 29. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver and shall, and she shall be his wife. Then she shall be his wife. Not she already his wife because he had sex with her. See, the father owns the wife or the daughter. So he can, he can give the daughter to someone without her permission because she belongs to the father. He can't. That's the law. He got to take the money according to the scripture. He shall pay according to the dowry of virgins. It says, and the man of Tice, a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow to be his wife. If the, her, her, her father utterly refused to give her unto see, so he's refusing, whatever. He shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. Once he pay that money, he got to. That's the law. If you don't want the money, I guess I'll keep the money. I'm still taking taking her because, uh, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but that's not what it says. It says he shall pay money according to the dowry of wife. The law says he got to give 50 shekels. I, don't, I mean, I don't, uh, he, I'm, if the father is a holy man, he's going to go by the law. The law says 50 shekels. He can't, he can't go and say 60 shekels. You know what I'm saying? The law say 50 shekels is 50 shekels. I didn't say nothing about 50 shekels. And if she's prettier, then you can get more from it. It says 50 shekels. He can't refuse because it's the law. Remember, during that time, they kept the law. So they didn't go against what God told them to do. God said, hey, you don't want him to marry her. Then she got to pay you 50 shekels. And he pay him 50 shekels. He's not going to sit there and go against God and say, I, ain't, I don't care if you give me no 50 shekels unless you're a wicked man. You got to do according to the law. You can't make it. You can't change what God has stated. You see, so that's the day we 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 don't do what God tells us to do. So we like, hey, I want sixty. Well, Lord, but here say fifty, uh, sir. I don't care what they say. Well, I say sixty. We may do that, but according to the law, it's at fifty shekels. So if you are a law-abiding lover of God, you're gonna go by what the law say. It say fifty, you you get fifty. It don't say fifty. You choose what amount you give. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, you can do it, but I know. Right. They were. So if you had someone who didn't keep the law, maybe over that, that if, if they betrothed. And he lied with her, then they're to be put to death, which means you're married because you're in covenant with her. And you just took your neighbor's uh, wife. Mm -hmm. Right. So in like 24, when you go. If you go in 24, you see how it says it's a damsel. So it's an unmarried woman. She's betrothed unto a man. But you read down in 24, it says he had humbled his, his neighbor's wife. So he's calling that damsel, which is in, in espoused, his wife, his neighbor's wife. Letting you know that when you're espoused, it's your wife. You see that? See how in 23, in Deuteronomy 22 and 23, it says if a damsel of a virgin be betrothed, meaning engaged. But if you go down to 24, it says that uh, 
if that engaged woman sleeps with that man, then they both are to are there to be put to uh, put to death because he humbled his neighbor's wife. So it's letting you know that 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 damsel that is betrothed is his wife. It's using the word wife in 24, even though it's saying it's betrothed in 23, meaning that they hadn't gone through the marriage ceremony. It's the same. When you're betrothed, you're married. You see that? You have to put them together. It's talking about, you see what I'm talking about, everybody? No, the, the damsel was betrothed to a man, to another man, and she slept with someone else while she was engaged. And it says they got to be put to death. The man got to be put to death because he humbled his neighbor's wife. So it's letting you know when they, because you're engaged, you, that's your wife. That's, that's his wife. I don't care whether they've been met, went through a marriage ceremony. That's your wife, his wife. And you just humble another man's wife. It's not, oh, well, she was just, they were just engaged like they would do today. Well, you weren't married to him. No, nah, no. Nah. You're married when you're engaged because you made an oath, a covenant. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. Where are we at? Ecclesiastes. Okay. In Ecclesiastes chapter 42, verse 9, and it reads, The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth, and the care for her taketh away sleep when she is young, lest she pass away the flower of her age, and being married, lest she should be hated. Okay, so it says the father wake for for the daughter when no man know her. That's what a father does for his daughter. He's always going in checking on her, making sure she in the bed, making sure ain't no guy she going out in the middle of the night to go see. Why is it saying that? It says when no man know her, the wife is still sleeping. He always checking on his daughter. Okay, because he want to make sure his daughter remain a virgin. And the care of for her taking away sleep. Caring for her, he don't get a lot of sleep because he's always watching those jokers that want to sleep with his daughter. When she is young, lest she pass away the fly, unless she has sex and, and, and she's no longer a virgin. And being married, lest she should be hated. And getting married is not a virgin and be hated by her husband. Okay? Go, we did 10? No, Go ahead. 10. Verse 10. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house and having an husband that she should behave, misbehave herself. And when she is married, that she should be barren. See, it was a terrible thing to have a child while you're living in your father's house. People do it now. It's like, oh, yeah, whatever. You know, things happen. No. It was a bad thing to be pregnant while living in your parents' house. Okay? And that's why he's checking on her. Making sure his daughter's doing the right thing, making sure she's in school, making sure she's not out with with a girlfriends uh, with some guy in the corner. OK. Verse 11. Keep a sure watch over a shameless daughter, lest she make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies. See, she'll make you a laughing stock when somebody find out everybody talk, especially you live in the country. Hey, you know, uh, so and so, our daughter pregnant, da, 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 you become the laughing stock of the town. Because your daughter is pregnant in your in the parents' house and not married. Go ahead. And a byword in the city. Hey, she's a whatever. Go ahead. And a reproach among the people and make thee ashamed before the multitude. So she's going to be ashamed to you having a child while she's in the parents' house. Okay, let's go. So Leviticus Chapter 19, verse 29, and it reads, Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. Do not prostitute your daughter to be a whore. Don't let your daughters go out there with short, tight miniskirts on. Don't let your daughter wear pants. Don't let your daughter wear tight pants and all the stuff and dress all provocatively, showing their breasts and everything. Don't let your prostituting your daughter. You setting her up. And that's the that's the that's the job of the parents to make sure that their daughters are right. Don't just let always oh, cute. That's the newest fashion. I don't care nothing about no fashion. Y'all let your daughters go out any kind of way. Let them wear pants. Let them wear uh, halter, top. halter tops. 
dresses with no fringes. Y'all, y'all let them do whatever you want to do. Y'all let them. Then they end up getting prayed and got five kids by five different daddies. And then you don't sit and look at yourself. You're the problem. You didn't raise your daughter right. You didn't watch over your daughter. And that and the uh, uh, and this is the consequences. Go ahead. Let's, where we are. let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17. And it reads, there shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. They're not supposed to be any men and men together. And there's not supposed to be any whores in the daughters of Israel. They're not supposed to be sleeping around with a bunch of men until they are married. Period. And that's your job to watch over them and to teach them what's right and wrong. Okay, go ahead. Genesis chapter 24, verse 51. Behold, Rebecca is before thee. Take her and go. And let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord has spoken. This is verse 53. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother and her mother precious things. 59. Verse 59. And they sent away Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. So they made, the father had made a covenant with the with the other family to sell to, to give the daughter over to, I think it was Isaac, right? Okay, and uh, I'm down to verse sixty-seven. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. See, some people say and took Rebekah, meaning had sex. So see, he took Rebekah and they had sex, and that's when they were married. Once they had sex, it's not talking about that. So we're going to uh, open up uh, your BLBs and we're going to go through 24. It's Genesis chapter 24, verse 67 in the NIV. Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother, Sarah, and he married Rebecca. So she became his wife and loved her, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. So when they say he took his wife, it's talking about he married her. And then and she became his wife. He married her. He didn't take her and have sex. I mean, sex is marriage. And that's why he had to have sex with her to be officially married or consummate the marriage. That's a form of 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 of, uh, of, of marriage. If you have sex, that right there is a way of being married. Also, no, it's not a way of being married. That verse, whoever think thought that that meant that they had sex is incorrect. It's talking about became his wife. When he took her, it meant she became his wife, not that they had sex. OK, now let's go to Strong's to prove it. For the word took. Let me read that out. Yes. OK. It's a strong. It's H 3947. To take, get, fetch, lay hold of, seize. Receive, acquire, buy, bring, marry. See, it says to marry when it says took, to acquire. He acquired his wife. He married his wife. Take a wife. Go ahead. Take a wife. Snatch. Take away. Okay. And if you go down uh, to four. Yep. Okay. To take two or for a person. Procure, get, take possession of, select, choose, take in marriage, receive, accept. See, the take in marriage. So when it say he took her, he took her in marriage, not that he had sex with her. See, you got Israelites that try to find stuff to say that sex is marriage. That's not what it's talking about. He took her, meaning he married her and she became his wife. OK. Let's move on. Where are we at now? Go on to 2 Samuel chapter 13 and verse 1. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. Okay, you got Tamar, who was a beautiful, 
uh, uh, female, and you had Ammon, which was her brother from another son. Okay. And, and oops, I'm, go ahead. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar. For, for she was a virgin, and Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. Right, so he was vexed. He really wanted her. He really loved her, or really wanted her lustfully, or wanted her. Okay, go ahead. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Je Jonadab, the son of Shem Shemia, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. And he said unto him, Why art thou, being the king's son, lean from day to day? Wilt thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar. My brother Absalom's sister. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed, and make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat, and dress the meat in my sight, that I may see it, and eat it at her hand. Right, just to get her to come, he won't be sick, so she can come and take care of him. Go ahead. And Amnon laid down, and made himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar my sister come, and make me a couple of cakes in my sight, that, may, that I may eat it from her hand. Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go now to thy brother Amnon's house, and dress him meat. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he, lay, and he was laid down. And she took flour, and kneaded it, and made cakes in his sight, and did bake the cakes. And she took a pan, and poured them out before him, but he refused to eat. And Amnon said, Have out all men from me. From me. And they went out every man from him. And Amnon said unto Tamar, Bring the meat into the chamber, that I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made, and brought them into the chamber to Amnon her, Amnon, excuse me, Amnon her brother. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her, and said unto her, Come lie with me, my sister. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. See, don't do this folly. This thing ought not to be. There's a proper way for us to get married or for us to do these things. See, she kept the law. But he was so full of lust, he, he would break the law because he wanted her so bad. Go ahead. Verse 13. And I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? As for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. You will be a fool in Israel for going doing it improperly, and you're going to bring shame to me because I will no longer be a virgin, uh, a virgin anymore. And I won't be able to get a husband properly because I'm no longer a virgin. Go ahead. Now, therefore, I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. Right. Speak to the king. Tell him you want me. And, and the, I'm sure the king will give you to me. I'm not refusing. But I just want to do it the right way. Go ahead. How be it. He would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she forced her and lay with her. OK, so he forced her. I guess I will. Go ahead. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly. So that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. So he just tell her, Get out. I already got what I wanted. Get out. And she said unto him, There is no cause. This evil in sending me away is greater than other that thou didst to me, unto me. This is greater. Your sending me away is greater than your raping me. Go ahead. But he would not hearken unto her. Then he called his servant that ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman out from me, and bolt the door after her. And she had a garment of diverse colors upon her, for with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparel. Then his servant brought her out and bolted the door after her. And Tamar put ashes on her head and rent her garment of diverse colors that was on her, and laid her hand on her head and went on crying. Right, because this is serious to her. This is almost worth jumping off of a bridge and dying over. I know women today don't care about it, but that, that's a serious during that time. Go ahead. And Absalom, her brother, said unto her, Hath Abnon thy brother been with thee? Behold now thy peace, my sister. He is thy brother. Regard not this thing. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. But when King David heard of these things, he was very wroth. And Absalom spoke to, unto his brother Amnon, neither good nor bad. For Absalom hated Amnon, because he had forced his sister Tamar. And it came to pass after two full years that Absalom had sheep shears and bought Baal Hazar which is beside Ephraim, and Absalom invited all the king's sons. Right. So the point being, so far, it didn't say he's married because he had sex with her. She didn't say, well, you know we had sex, so we're married. You're not married because you had sex. 
You're not married until you make that commitment. You're in sin. You just fornicated. You're not married because you had sex with a woman. Don't let nobody fool you that sex is marriage. Unless you're engaged, unless you're given to a man or you're engaged, you're not married to that man. He just made a whore out of you. That's why I said there's no whore in the daughters of Israel. You're supposed to marry them, not just have sex with them. Go ahead. Verse 24. And Absalom came to the king and said, Behold now, thy servant has sheep shears. Let the king, I beseech thee, and his servants go with thy servant. And the king said to Absalom, Nay, my son. Let us not all now go, lest we be chargeable unto thee. And he pressed him, howbeit he would not go, but blessed him. Then Absalom, then said Absalom, If not, I pray thee, let my brother Amnon go with us. And the king said unto him, Why should he go with thee? But Absalom pressed him, and he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Now Absalom had commanded his servants, saying, Mark ye now when Amnon's heart is merry with wine. And when I say unto you, Smite Amnon, then kill him. Fear not. Have not I commanded you? Be courageous and be valiant. And the servants of Absalom did unto Amnon as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and every man got him up upon his mule and fled. Okay, so you had him. You he killed he killed his brother or whatever for sleeping with his uh, sister. He waited two years to get him back. Yeah, he, he no, this ain't going down like this. You just you just uh, raped my my sister. Go through the rest of it, but the point being. Hey, sex is not marriage. You just made a, a whore out of the daughter of Israel. Okay, where are we at now? Numbers chapter 30, verse 1. And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. If a man bow a vow to the Lord and swear an oath to bind his soul with a bind, with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. Right. So you made a bond when you told when you when you if you say, hey, we're married or we're engaged, you made a bond before God, a vow. You can't break that vow. Even though men break it, they wonder why things happen to them in their life. But you're breaking vows. You, you're doing you're saying this. You're going to do this. It doesn't matter what you say. I'm going to be here. I'm going to do this, whatever. When you're not doing it, you just broke a vow. You wonder why things happen to you. These are why things happen to you. Hey, I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And you don't do it. Go ahead. If a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord and bind herself by a bond, being her father's house in her youth, and her father hear her vow and her bond wherewith she had bound her soul, and her father shall hold his peace at her, and all of her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. If she's in her father's house and she says some vow and her father hears that vow and doesn't do anything about it that she's bound by that vow go ahead but if her father disallow her in the day that he heareth not any of her vows or, or her bonds wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand and the Lord shall forgive her because her father disallowed her see a father can disallow a vow that's how powerful a father because remember the father is over her the father is over the daughter so he's in charge. The daughter can say something and he can say, Father, don't listen to her. Because he's in charge. You can't look at it the way we look at it today. You are in control of your daughter. You're supposed to be. So you can tell your daughter whatever you want to tell. She can't she can't. She can't say something. If you hear it, you can disavow it. And it, it has no power. Go ahead. Okay, verse uh, six. six. And then she had an all in husband when she vowed and uttered out, out, out of her lips wherewith she bound her soul. And her husband heard it and held his peace in her day that he heard it. And her vow shall stand and her bonds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband disallowed her on the day that he heard it, then he shall, then he shall make her vow which she vowed and that which she uttered with her lips, wherewith she bound her soul of none effect, and the Lord shall forgive her. See, even a husband can disavow anything the wife say. You might hear your, sometimes you hear women just say anything crazy because they just, sometimes they emotional. And they bind their souls. 
You can disallow, disavow whatever she vowed. That's the power of a husband. Husband and a man is not equal. She can't disavow your words, but you can disavow her words. And men have to stay in their position and know who, how much power they have. Okay, go ahead. But every vow of a widow and of her that is divorced, wherewith she had bound her soul, shall stand against her. And if she vowed in her husband's house or bound her soul by a bond with an oath, and her husband heard it and held his peace at her and disallowed her not, then all her vows shall stand and every bond wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband hath utterly made them void on the day he heard them, then whatsoever proceedeth out of her lips concerning her vows or concerning the bond of her soul shall not stand. Her husband hath made them void and the Lord shall forgive her. Okay, so if she doesn't have a husband or he's died or whatever, she does a vow, it stands because she don't have anybody to disallow, disavow that, that vow. But she has a husband or a father, he can disavow it. But if she doesn't have no head, then it stands. And whatever she curses herself, she's cursed. Whatever it is that she does, it stands because she doesn't have anybody to disavow it. Okay, go ahead. Verse is it are we on 13? Yeah, 13. Every vow and every binding oath to afflict the soul, her husband may establish it, or her husband may make it See, void. Every oath. Her husband can establish that oath, or he can he can uh uh void it. Go ahead. But if her husband altogether hold his peace from at her from day to day, then he establish then he establisheth all her vows and all her or all her bonds, which are upon her, which are excuse me, which are upon her. He confirmeth them because he held his peace. At her in the day that he heard them. That's why every time you hear your wife say something that's incorrect, that's why you have to correct it. Because each one stands. Well, I don't feel like fussing with my wife all the time. You're supposed to disavow it. I don't care if you got to fuss with your wife every, all day long. You need to disavow it 30 times if it's 30 different things she did that day that she said something stupid and made a vow on her soul. Because I know how men are. They just go and find another woman and mess with another woman and say, let her do whatever she do. You, you, that's not what you're supposed to do. Okay? Go ahead. Is it? Oh, we got two more. Okay. But if, he, but if he shall in any ways make them void after he hear, after he hath heard them, then he shall bear her inequity. These are the statutes which the Lord commanded Moses between a man and his wife, between the father and his daughter, being yet in her youth in her father's house. Right. In her youth in her father's house. Okay. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 5 and 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 2. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore let thy words be few. That's why he said let your words, you've got to be careful what you say out of your mouth. Because you are making covenants, you're making vows when you open your mouth. So let your words be few. Because you, the more you speak, the more you are making vows. And if you don't complete those vows, the more issues you have. Okay, go ahead. Um, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. And it reads, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out, of the, for out of it are the issues of life. The issues of life comes out of your heart, meaning your mind. Whatever you think is what you see. You say something, the way that things are created is through the spoken word. You speak it, it go first thing is go in your mind, you think about it, then you speak it. When you speak it, you brought it into fruition. That's why you have to be careful what you say. You hear people say that kills me. Okay, well, when you die, don't say you why you dying. You said it to yourself. I love her the D-A-T-H. Why you don't say I love her to life? You said I, now when whoever you love die, don't say why God you did it. You did it. Everything is through the spoken word. Be careful what words you're saying and speaking over yourself. You can speak life or you can speak death over yourself. Everything that was created, God created through the spoken word. He said and he said and he saw what he said. Unless he said, let there be life. Everything is through the spoken word. That brings out, that's why I say be few with words. Because sometimes you just say things out of anger, you say things and they come forth. You got to be careful when you open your mouth. Okay, go ahead. Proverbs 18, verse 21. And it reads, 
Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. If you love life, it's in your tongue. If you broke all the time, a lot of times people speak, oh, I will never have money. Ah, da, da, da. And now you don't have money. Don't be surprised. Why are you surprised? You spoke it into existence. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. He's giving you the key to, to the key to life. It's what you say out of your mouth. That's why you got to be careful what you speak. Go ahead. But Ecclesiasticus chapter 37, verse 18. And it reads, four manner of things appear, good and evil, life and death. But the tongue ruleth over them continually. Right. Four manner of things appear, good and evil, life and death, but the tongue ruleth over them continue. See, the tongue ruleth over life and death. Speaking words of life, speaking words of death is the tongue. That's the energy. That's why you hold your mouth. That's why you don't say certain things because you bring you, you're going to bring it out. You have to know. I know your tongue want to say it. Sometimes you just got to hold your peace because you can bring life on the person or you can bring death on the person by speaking certain words. You can bring it on your own self. I hear people say, I'm always sick. I, I, I got 15 different medicines and, and I'm always this and that. I always. Well, it's true. What do you want me to do? It's true. Oh, I feel old. I feel old. And now you're walking around all looking like you're crippled. Well, you feel old, right? Hey, you, God gave you what you said. You got to be careful. You got to be careful what you say. Go ahead. Let's go to Luke chapter 6, verse 45. And it reads, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. See, the abundant, what you have in your mind is what's spoken out of your mouth and brought into existence. That's why I say life and death is in the fire of the tongue. And what you let come in, if you're hanging around thugs all day, uh, people who curse and people who do this, and that's what's in you, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You're going to be cursing every two seconds. Because you're doing what you let go into you. Out of the what's in your mind is what you're gonna speak. And you're either speaking life words or death words. You either speaking words to benefit someone or you speaking words to hurt someone. That's why you gotta be careful cursing and, and, and saying all kind of stuff. You gotta be careful. Go ahead. Let's go to Ephesians chapter four and verse twenty nine. And it reads, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. You want to not have corrupt communication. Cursing is corrupt communication. But only that what is good for edifying someone. You want to speak words that edify people. Cursing does not edify people. Okay. No, Ephesians 4.29 is what we're going to go into the other translation. We're going to start with the NLT. Okay. Ephesians 4.29, the NLT. Don't use foul or abusive language. Don't use foul or abusive language. Cursing is foul language. Everybody here, you know, when you're young, stop. you got a foul mouth. Okay? Or you curse like a sailor. It says don't use foul or abusive language. Go ahead. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. OK, now let's go to the NIV. Ephesians 4:29 in the NIV. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. that it may be benefit that it may benefit those who listen. OK, now let's go to the CSB version. CSB. No foul language should come out should come from your mouth but only what is good for building up someone in need so that it gives grace to those who hear. Okay, now let's go to, was it AMP? Yes, sir. 
It's A and P. Do not let unwholesome, foul, profane, worthless, vulgar words ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech as is good for building up others according to the need and the occasion so that it will be a blessing to those who hear you speak. Do not let unwholesome, foul, profane, worthless, vulgar words come out of your mouth. We have to watch what we're saying because a lot of times if you say certain things, other people pick up and then they get loose too. One person cursing and stuff, then the next person you hear somebody else in the group now starting to curse. And we aren't the try, we're not trying, we're trying to lift people up, get them closer to the most high, not lower them. So we have to be careful to make sure that we watch our mouth, we watch the words coming out of our mouth, and that we stop any cursing if we're cursing. Ephesians 4, and we're going to start with 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Right, that's grieving the Holy Spirit when you curse. Okay, and saying foul words. That's grieving the Holy Spirit. And you do, you, do you want to be sealed at the time of redemption? If you don't want to be sealed, then continue cursing, and you won't be sealed at the time of redemption. Go ahead. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Right. Okay, let's go. At Matthew chapter 5 and verse 32. It reads, But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. Okay, so that's just the beginning, kind of going through a adultery. If you have a wife, she's Israelite, whatever, you just can't put her away. Unless it's adultery. That's the only way you can put away a wife. Okay, go ahead. Verse 33. Again, ye have heard it that it has been said by them of the old time. Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. See, you can't. He says, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but thou shalt perform the, unto the Lord thy oaths. Whatever oaths you make to the Most High, you got to do it. That's an oath when you make, when you tell a woman you're going to marry her. And you got to perform that oath to the Most High. And that's why you're going through problems. That's why this issue, that's the issue. That you have. Go ahead. Verse 34. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Right. You're not supposed to swear at all. You don't own nothing. How can you swear to something? You hear people say, I had, on my on my daddy grave or my my my, oh, my, my mama. mama, whatever. You don't have control of your mama. You don't have to, it's not owned by you. How can you swear on something that you don't own? Stop swearing. You don't own nothing. You can't swear on yourself. Only God can tell you when you're going to die. You can try to kill yourself. You can try to do whatever. Until God ready for you to die, you ain't going to die. You can drink poison. If he ain't ready for you to die, you ain't going to die. So you don't have control of nothing. So you can't swear on something that is not yours to swear on. Go ahead. Now that shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communications be, yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Let your communication, don't swear, just say yes or no. Yea for yea and nay for nay. Hey, are you going to, are you going to do this? Yes, you ain't got to say, I, I dwell on my mama, or what? you ain't got to say, just say yes. Let your yea be yea, your nay be nay, you don't need to do no swearing to try to bring more power to it. Okay. Where are we at next? Got okay. Tobit chapter 7, verse 14. An apocrypha. And it reads. Well, we'll start with a 13. That's fine. I'm going to. We'll start with 13. Then he called his daughter Sarah, and she came to her father and took her by the hand. He gave her to be wife to Tobias, saying, Behold, take her after the law of Moses and lead her away to thy father. And he blessed them and called Edna his wife and took paper. And did write an instrument of covenants and sealed it. Right. You've got instruments of covenants and sealed it. A marriage license. See, it said you got to follow the law of the land. So it's not just marrying through the spoken word that we're married. You also have to do the, another part, which is get a, law, a license. See, a lot of Israelites just do the first part. 
Ah, oh, we ain't married. We ain't in covenant. You got to do the second part. You got to have a license. OK. You have to have a license. That's what the scriptures command you to do. And a lot of men try to get out of where they, if they don't marry you with paperwork, then they can get out of when they ready to leave you. They don't all can do is leave. I ain't got to be caught up in the courts and all that. And the stupid women fall for it. And then they leave them and they like you my in the court. You my girlfriend. I'll marry you for, quote unquote, 10 years, 15 years. He died and nothing. He can, she can't do nothing. It's like, hey, she's my aunt. Uh, that's your girlfriend. The mother get everything because that's the let. That's that's who. Uh, that's and maybe the mother don't like uh, don't like um, your wife. Maybe your mother don't like your wife. Now your mother take everything and won't give nothing to your wife that you've been with for 10 or 15 years because you didn't have a marriage license. And that's the things that happen because men being slick and then they end up passing away. And then now the, 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 the mother who didn't like the daughter, your, your wife, come in, take the house, kick her out and everything. And she like, where am I supposed to go? That's why you're supposed to have a license. OK, what's next? Going to Genesis chapter one and verse three. And it reads, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. He said, he spoke it, and what happened? Immediately there was light. See, the spoken word is how things are created. Go ahead. Verse Jump down to verse 6. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And uh, in verse 7 at the end it says, and it was so. Again, he spoke it, and it came into existence. Go ahead. Verse 9. And God said, let the waters unto the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. He spoke it, and it was so. Go. Verse 11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit yielding fruit, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. He spoke it, and it was so. Go ahead. Verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and for years, and let them for lights... Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And it was so. He spoke it and it was so. Go ahead. Verse 20. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth and the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. So he saw it was good. He spoke it and it was there. OK, go ahead. Verse 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And it was so. He spoke it and it, was, it came to pass. Go ahead. Verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him have a dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth. And every other creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Okay, and it was so again. Go ahead. Verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in which in the which the fruit is the fruit of the tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. Right. So it'll be for meat. And if in verse 30 it says, And it was so. Okay. And now let's go to the uh the last one, 31. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And God saw everything that he spoke, and it was so. He said, and he said, and he said, and he saw what he said through the spoken word. That's why you have to watch what you say out of your mouth. Because you speak things in the, into existence. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. It's you that's creating life, and it's you that's creating death. And some people don't know that. And that's why they have problems. Oh, my my mama or my so and so. I got cancer in my family. I got heart problems in my family. And I, I probably have it, too. You just spoke. You just yourself. spoke. It. No wonder why you got it. No wonder. It runs in my family. Da, 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 da. Uh -uh. I don't care if something ran in my family. It ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm healed from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. No that's weapon right. against me shall prosper. <laughs> I don't right. know nothing about, all right, the doctor, uh, do you have heart problems in your family? Why matter? 
Ain't got nothing to do with me if I do or don't. I'm healed from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. I don't have no problem. So you have to be careful what you say. You have to stop any cursing because you don't want others to pick up that bad habit. And then you and um, like we said, sex is not marriage. Unless your father is giving you away, unless you are unless you have you're in marriage or covenant with someone, sex itself is not marriage. And don't let anybody fool you in that as soon as you have sex, then that makes us automatically married. Okay, let's go read Matthew. Sir. Uh, Matthew 26, verse 6. Now, when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, and he said unto them, why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For you have the poor with you. For you have the poor always with you. But me ye not have always. For in, for in that she hath poured this ointment on my body. She did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you. Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world. There shall also this. That this woman hath done. Be told for a memorial of her. Right. So we're, 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 given, we're doing what the scriptures say. And we're... Uh, Tell them what this woman did for Christ. And with that, I say shalom.